Good morning, uh, it's Jim Warren with TechSapa. Glad to have you guys here again. This fall focus, we are focusing on our scholarship program since we normally do that at our annual meeting. Uh, we're spending a lot of time and effort focusing on our scholarship program. And I uh, wanted to just tell you a couple things we're, we're doing. We're doing a fundraiser um, and uh, you can go to that website down there, texasasphalt.org 2020 donate. A uh, big, uh, big thanks to Angel Brothers and Century Asphalt for being uh, at our benefactor level scholarship. Um, champion level is Anderson Columbia, uh, AL, Hen AL Henkamp, and Longview Asphalt. Uh, we also have regular sponsors at HNTB, Jebro, Power, Power Screen Texas, and Lost, and also an advocate with Cutler. So thank you guys so much. Uh, for donating uh, to this program. It, it's going to help out. It's going to help put kids into college, and those kids are going to come and work for you guys. So you're helping yourself in this process. And today's safety share is on binder sampling uh, first aid. Obviously, we're talking about binders today on um, both liquid and emulsions, um, but we certainly always want to take an opportunity to be careful out there. We, number one, we've got to get good samples. If we don't get a good sample, we're not going to get a reasonable, a good test result. So we got to start with a good sample. And so sampling properly is critical. Um, so we all know that there's a there's an increased emphasis on sampling and testing. Uh, extreme care during sampling must be followed at all times. Um, wear all the PPE that's required, and remember these five things in case there is a spill. Uh, on your skin. So if you got if you're fully covered, the chance of you getting liquid asphalt on your skin is minor or very 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 remote. But if you do, uh, number one, we're going to call for help. Um, we're going to check airway, breathing, circulation. If you get a big splash of asphalt, it's certainly possibly going to put you into shock. So and then the next thing we want to do is we want to cool the area. And we don't, and then we don't want to try to remove the actual material itself, and we don't cover it. And then we get ourselves to let the medical professionals sort this out. Don't go dig your, stick your hand in a bucket of diesel and try to wipe it off. Let's let's get the proper medical condition, proper medical attention, so you don't have a problem later on. Here's a little video clip that the Asphalt Institute put together. This is a little snippet from their program, uh, just to reinforce some of these issues. Sure, please. Notify others. Call for help. Immediately address any airway, breathing, or circulation concerns. Start cooling. Quickly place the affected area under running, flowing water. Do not remove asphalt from the skin. Leave the burn uncovered. Medical experts advise that immediate cooling is the best treatment. Because the hot asphalt continues to burn and do continual damage to the skin, it is important to cool the burn until you get the temperature down to room temperature. This cooling process can take as long as 15 to 20 minutes. All right, so there's an opportunity there. If you want some more detail on that, to uh, to go to the Asphalt Institute and uh, and look at their program. So there's a, there's additional safety materials there. So. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, uh, our Executive Vice President, Harold Mullen, is with us today, and uh, he's going to do a little intro for us. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Texafa's Fall Focus. We are delighted you are here. You know, today we are focused on results, and uh, there's well, nobody knows more about results than Textop Materials and Tests and our liquid asphalt suppliers, our major associate members. They do a great job of partnering together to give us those good results we need to see, and that result can ultimately end up in good quality asphalt pavement out there on the highway. But you know, right now today, we should be sitting down in San Antonio, Texas at La Quintero Resort, having our annual meeting. And, and we're sorry we can't be there. You know, everything's come up. And uh, even on Tuesday, we had technical difficulties. So we blame everything on COVID, but COVID can't keep us down. So we're, we're having that fall focus this year to remind us that we're all together, that we're in this together, that we're communicating with each other, we're talking about the things that are important that make our industry great, and that's what Texas Fall Focus is all about. Today, specifically, we'll be down there in uh, 
but we'd be finishing up some of our technical sessions, but we'd be getting ready for that great scholarship live and silent auction. That would be held tonight. And we've been working, as Jim said, on uh, our scholarship program, which changes lives. We've been working on getting donations for that program so we can continue that and, and build that to be even bigger and better. Uh, I want to bring you up to date. Jim was talking about uh, some of our great members who have already given generously to the program. Uh, we, uh, we have an update on that right now, Jim. We're up to just cash donations coming in so far up to $65,000. Yeah, baby. That's, that's 65 already. We are just delighted with that. Uh, awesome. Also, our uh, virtual golf tournament has brought in over $2,000 already. So we stand at $67,000 so far, and we're looking forward to uh, expand that even more through the month of uh, September. And uh, we're going to have a good time with raising even more dollars at the Texapa Squares that will be coming up on September 24th. So you don't want to miss that. So I uh, just want to bring everybody up to date. Thank you for your generosity. And we certainly appreciate that. And that goes to an extremely great cause in our scholarship program. But today we want to focus on results. And uh, our uh, major associate members who are our liquid asphalt suppliers have done a great job of partnering with TechStop Materials and Test Division. And, uh, and vice versa and coming up with a great liquid asphalt sampling and testing program. Uh, you've heard about it and you're going to hear about it in great detail today. And I just want to, to inform everybody that we have a, uh, a moderator is, is Ted Flanagan with Right Asphalt. Ted is the chairman of our major associate members this year and has done a great job. And also we have materials and test division uh, represented. Miles Garrison is the director of TechStop Materials and Test. Uh, we also have Ryan Barbarak, who is the Deputy Director of Textile Materials Test. And Inad Muhammad is here, and he is the new Flexible Payments Director for uh, Textile. So uh, congratulations there. Uh, Inad, glad to have you. So Ted, with that, I know y'all are got a lot of great information to share with us. I'm going to kick it over to you. And, and thank you, Ted. I appreciate you doing all this. Well, thank you, Harold. I really appreciate uh, the fact that um, we made the time, you know, that uh, TechSapa felt it was important enough to go ahead and continue to uh, have these discussions that we were gonna go ahead and have as a panel discussion at the annual meeting. So thank you again for, for making that available and, and uh, possible on this, on this topic. Also wanna thank the, our good folks over there at MTD, you know, our directors, Miles, Ryan, as well as you, Anad, uh, for also making yourself available uh, two times now. Uh, and one of the things that I'd like to share with folks is that every time we've, we've gone through this process, which it's been about three years going as far as uh, when, you, when we were talking about the initial talking points, uh, when we were talking about the specification changes and, and the ongoing communication, and every time we've always had full representation uh, involved with it. And, and again, as a major associate member and as well as the, the chairman, I appreciate that, and I know on behalf of the membership, you know, we all appreciate your your commitment uh, to keeping this on track and keeping the focus going forward because it's a true testament to where you guys put your values. Um, again, this um, this spec that we're dealing with right now, um, the liquid asphalt binder uh, sampling and testing program, um, has basically been in. In full implementation now for almost a year, and uh, and through that process, uh, we've been we've we've been able to have an opportunity to continue to um, look at it, evaluate it, and uh, the ongoing conversations that that have been helping us is based is based upon the fact that people have been very transparent and the communications have been open, and and I I appreciate that on all parties because that's the only way we can continue to grow this process. Um, one thing that people don't understand is that uh, uh, this program is, is a very complex and multifunctional uh, process. And, and I think a great way to enter into this conversation is to give you folks over there at MTD an, an opportunity to uh, give us an overview and, and an explanation uh, concerning the history and the scope of this program. So I open it up to you guys. Well, well thanks, Ted. Uh, uh, appreciate that. So, you know, Back in September uh, 2018, uh, materials and, and test division began working to uh, improve confidence in, in the asphalt binder quality program. And there are two major components to that. You know, there's the there's the QM side and the project side. So QM side is the uh, it deals with quality of the asphalt binder at the uh, 
at the source, uh, at the supplier's uh, location, the, the source of the asphalt binder, that demonstrates that the, the supplier can make, produce a, a quality product for TxDOT that can be, uh, then can be shipped to our projects. The project site, on the other yeah. hand, represents uh, the quality of the asphalt binder that is uh, received and used at our, on our projects and, and, is, and is actually used for the acceptance of the material. And so uh, uh, both very important and, and, and major components of this program of quality. So materials and tests then, of course, we, we, we set out to uh, uh, refresh, update those docs. We looked to see what we had. We started with our documents, you know, and updating those documents back in, 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 in 2018 and, and, uh, and, and just looking to see what all we needed to do to, to get the program going to, again. Of course, what we have in those documents, uh, what, what state, uh, well, what we say we're going to do, we've got to follow through with. We've got to do it. And one of the things that we saw that we that we haven't been doing a good job of was uh, was uh, that we needed to go around to all these uh, supplier locations and and, and take uh, 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 witness these samples being taken and take custody of those samples and and, and get those back to the central lab for testing. And so we asked ourselves, where are these locations at? So. You know, uh, 20 years ago, uh, there, there were probably 20 source locations out there. And so uh, we, uh, we have tech, better technology now. So we, we you know, we went and uh, we got the, these locations and plotted them on Google Earth and put them up on the screen. And, said, and wow, you know, we say now, now we don't have, we don't have 20 locations. We have quadruple that number now. And, and, and not only that, it's, it's, they're located over seven states. And so, you can see how big of a program is uh, that, that is. And we, so we had to figure out how materials and tests was going to be able to go around the, to, through seven states and, and witness and, and, and take possession of these samples. And so at the same time, you know, uh, materials and tests uh, became a new division back in uh, September uh, 2018. And so we were working to bring up a new division as well. Uh, we, a little later, we brought on uh, Ryan. Uh, Marborak as a new uh, flexible payments uh, section director, and then a little later on from that, you know, we we, we brought on uh, Anand Mahmood, the uh, the, uh, the new asphalt uh, binder branch manager, and so we sat down together and uh, uh, and uh, and I'm going to say Buddy Williams too, and he's probably out there listening. And we sat down together and we worked on uh, that scope the, the of how we were going to go about uh, making around to all seven states. To, to uh, witness and and, uh, and and take possession of those samples. And also the, the program also includes us, uh, you know, uh, uh, going around back to the spire locations and, and verifying the, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the supplier's quality control plan. So that's a very important uh, part of that as well. And so uh, fall uh, of uh, 2019, as, as Ted said, you know, we, we we started out. Yeah, we, we started go, going to those uh, supplier locations and, and witnessing and collecting those samples monthly. Uh, and so we've continued to work on that, improve that, and tweak that as we go along, and, and, and work with industry to make that better. And, and, uh, is, is, and uh, so, so that is uh, so that is that you know that that's the QM side, the project side of that is that uh, uh, that project asphalt. Uh, we require uh, that asphalt to be witnessed and taken into custody. Those samples to be taken into custody as well. But materials and instead of materials and tests uh, taking those samples, we require the districts to uh, to take uh, to witness those samples, take custody of those samples. And and we have been also been working so for project acceptance. And so we have uh, been working also. Uh, 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 very diligently to uh, and, and, and continue to do that to it's very important to get those samples uh, 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 witness those and get those take those samples witness them of course uh, uh, take custody of them and get those shipped to materials and test materials and test uh, central lab uh, to test those materials get those results out uh, com communicate those results back to the, the supplier up to the and up to the district, and then the district needs to com communicate those results to the contractor. We've also started to something new here 
uh, recently is uh, we've gotten a contact name for each district. So if there's a failing sample, we will also call the, the, that contact person in that district and just in case they're away from their email and can't see it. And so it's very, communication is very important to everyone, you know, and it's, and it's very important, you know, time, time is very important. And so, uh, that, you know, to quality is important to textile, it's important to industry. And, and so it's, and so that's where we are. And, and, you know, and we want to continue to improve the program and we think, and we believe we see it uh, every day since in September, uh, the quality of, of the asphalt has improved. And, and, but we, you know, just want to emphasize that for, for this program to work, it takes everybody from, from the top to the bottom, from the bottom to the top. But we need to make sure that this information gets to everyone and, and that they understand how important, why it's important that, that we, we take those uh, samples and, and that we get those down materials and tests quickly. And it's important that materials and tests turns that sample around as quickly as it can and communicate that information out to everyone. So uh, there we are today. And, and I know I might have gotten into somebody else's territory there, there but uh, Ted, but but anyway, uh, we can drill down into some of the details as we go along. Thanks, Miles. And and you're right. You know, you gave a great overview of the of the process. And and you know, one of the things we can talk about right now is is uh, you know the whole QM process in itself. Um, you know, as a supplier, um, as all of us major associate members are, you know, we do go through a process of uh, certifying every month. And uh, you know. It would be interesting to see, you know, I, I know with this year due to COVID, um, we ran into a little bit of a, a, a problem uh, with the fact that once COVID hit that uh, you guys were pretty much locked down. And so some of the uh, um, auditing process and uh, uh, the reviewing process were put on hold. Uh, but, you know, it, it was an important start to the process. And I know hopefully soon here we'll, we'll have everybody wide open again so that we can continue that process as well. Um, uh, and, and really, I'm gonna just leave it open to the group here, to the panel that uh, anybody wants to jump in and, and talk about it, but you know, as far as on, the, on the, the source of the binder, you know, let's go ahead and break that down a little bit just to help people understand the, uh, the process in itself. Yeah, Ted, uh, this is an odd, uh, just to, uh, to add to that a little bit, the supply, I think it's critical that everyone knows that uh, when a supplier is able to send that or ship that material to a project, uh, it's been through, uh, it's, it's not, you know, supplies are not randomly selected or just, just sell material uh, online or anything. Uh, the processes, uh, every supplier submits a QC plan. Uh, QC plan is reviewed. Uh, we communicate with the suppliers before we uh, start the audit or the audit visit. Uh, so we have that information back and forth just to clear things up before we go and uh, do the audit. Uh, as you mentioned, unfortunately, COVID got us there uh, with the audit uh, with the audit for the uh, plans and the site visits. However, the uh, so we're still looking at the QC plans. Uh, we put on hold the audit. We were able only to visit two locations. Um, and we're, we're, uh, we're working with, uh, with the suppliers through the manager associates to find a way or find a plan, hopefully to uh, restart the process for plant inspections. Um, we're, we're still, we're still uh, you know, early stages of trying to either, we're either going to wait it out or uh, figure out a way to do it safely for everyone. Uh, so in addition to that, uh, supplier will have, we, submit samples every month for every grade. And uh, part of the process, as Miles mentioned, is that how we're gonna go visit all these places every month and uh, do that uh, audit uh, as well. So uh, one of the things we worked hard on was to get a professional engineering services contract uh, set up. And we have a textile representative uh, that's helping us with all these activities. That contract was uh, the challenging part about that contract. It was, it never existed before. There is nothing comparable to it. Uh, so we we had to start it from from scratch. Uh, no question about that. There was nothing similar to it. 
uh, a lot of other contracts. We call it uh, what we call PIPS division, the Professional Engineering Services Contract Division, and they'll oh, they'll get you a, a nice. He, he, here's a here's the contract that we did last year. It's very similar. You just adjust it to your district or your location. In this case, we didn't have uh, we didn't we didn't have something like this set up before, so we had to go through uh, the process of writing the scope uh, and getting uh, the bid out and, and reviewing applications and all that. Uh, so that 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 was that was part of the process is to get a, a textile representative uh, visiting uh, all the suppliers, uh, witnessing the sampling, uh, able to get those samples uh, in the right containers, uh, labeled correctly. Uh, we we established the uh, the labeling and documentation for every sample in our asphalt uh, guidance document, and uh, it applies to both. QM samples and project samples. So for the QM samples, uh, the text art representative will log in, log in the sample into site manager, uh, have it a site manager ID, put the FedEx number there, put the supplier, put the grade. So when we receive the sample, uh, we scan that barcode and it's simply everything goes into our system. Uh, so the sample was to say it's ready to go. Uh, the same thing we, um, uh, for the uh, project samples, uh, we we train districts uh, on how on how to uh, label uh, these uh, samples, uh, making sure that they're using the right container. And um, I'm I'm bringing the right container up multiple times. If you've noticed, uh, uh, it, we have uh, specific containers that fit specific material, and uh, especially for emulsions, you need to use. Uh, Plastic uh, jars, uh, you can't use a, a stainless steel or uh, just a regular asphalt binder uh, uh, cans uh, to, to avoid uh, reacting, to avoid, uh, uh, you know, uh, to, to avoid the, the emulsion from starting to uh, change or break before we receive it. So um, the, the witnessing and collection process uh, has been set up very well in our document. Uh, we, we we implemented it 100% in the QM side. Uh, on the project side, I'm honestly very, very impressed with uh, with the district reaction to, the, to, to this process. Uh, when we uh, started this implementation, we uh, set a target of everyone getting the uh, barcodes and the systems in place. and the goal was let's have February 1st, I believe, or January 1st of 2020. And by March, I would say more than 95% of the uh, project samples are labeled correctly uh, with the proper documentation. Uh, so I, I think we're, where we were and where we are, we uh, the districts had a Caught on to the program quickly. Uh, we still, of course, uh, we're still tweaking. We're still trying to get better at everything. However, uh, we're. Uh, I, I just. I just want to. Uh, I just want to have a shout out for the districts for uh, how far they come along from simply just sending a sample in a uh, in a can to going through labeling the sample correctly, filling the two two correctly, as well as uh, barcoding the. Uh, the sample so when we receive it we're able to uh, scan it and again i, I would say uh, when when we scan that barcode and everything is there that sample is ready to be tested uh, i think that's that that was a critical part of the the program that we were able to implement and and as i said it's it's a uh, it's a work in progress we're not 100 percent there yet but we're uh, we're very close Hey, Ted, before you get started, just a reminder, if anybody has any questions at any time, just go ahead and type them in the question box and send them in and we'll uh, we'll announce them and get them out to the panel. Uh, it's not too often you get this caliber of people uh, all in one place on one screen. So uh, please take advantage of that and uh, uh, send in your questions and we'll get them up to them. So thank you. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate that. and. Uh... You know, one of the things that, um, and, and the reason why I felt the, the major associates group membership, uh, you know, bought into this and really jumped into it wholeheartedly is that 
you know, we're very proud about the fact that we know we send out good quality material. And the certification process is a very uh, complicated process in that it's an ongoing uh, procedure. And, and one of the things that we do uh, on top of providing monthly sampling uh, is that every month we also provide backup to our quality control plan to MTD uh, to show how the testing is going on our daily QC testing that we do uh, to maintain our certification status. And uh, these are things that are really important and, and sometimes they're, they're kind of like behind the scenes, you know, people really don't understand everything that's happening and, and this gives us a great opportunity to, uh, to discuss that. Um, you know, one of the things that uh, we do know is that my company, I know we send in a lot of samples every month. Uh, you know, what is the typical load you guys get every month? Uh, so <laughs> that, I'm glad you brought that question. Uh, for, for supplier samples, we receive about 280 to 300 samples a month. Those are just supplier samples to be uh, qualified uh, every month. Uh, so those are not project samples. Uh, the project sample number uh, de depends on the season, goes up and down. Uh, so last month, August, total we received about 670 samples, uh, both suppliers and projects. And, and that was a record, that was a new record. <laughs> uh, the record before was about 650 last October. So, uh, so we'll see how this September and October shapes up to be. Uh, but yes, the, um, as you mentioned, uh, that's not only the number of suppliers, it's the number of products that each supplier produces. Uh, so the total is is close to 300 uh, that we do test uh, monthly. And, and uh, one of the things we're uh, trying to work with with the suppliers uh, moving forward is maybe we, you know, look at these materials that are truly being shipped to Texas projects, being used in, in TxDOT projects, or at least in the state of Texas. So we can see if we're, uh, if we, to give priority at least to TxDOT and Texas projects material rather than material with, um, and I know a lot of time we're, we're getting qualified, a supplier needs to be qualified just in case that material, get, you can get called and I need to sell this material now, so I need to be, <laughs> I need to be certified, but, uh, but I think we can we can work with the suppliers to look at trends and see if we've been testing a material for over a year and we don't have project samples for it. And is it, so is that a material that are being really used or uh, or are we missing something here? So that's something we're definitely going to work uh, with the suppliers on. Uh, in terms of the project samples, uh, the volume that we're receiving. Uh, Get, get, it's getting higher and higher, of course. It gets higher in the summer. But what it, what what I want to maybe take a, a tangent here on this is the uh, is the requirement for storage and, and why is that important and why these storage samples needs to be labeled correctly as well. So uh, and and the, for the seal coat and for the hot mix specifications, uh, districts are required to uh, sample every day um, and have that storage sample. Uh, labeled and um, put in the system in a way that we're able to go back and look and find that grade uh, for that for for a certain supplier we can find that grade and see which different projects it went to. So uh, if if you're if you're a supplier and you're shipping the same material to three four different projects uh, for an entire week, we should be able to find all the different samples we should be able in our system without, without going physically into the storage where the district is storing it uh, we should be able to log into our system and find out where we have samples of that grade from that supplier shipped on on, on that on a certain uh, date range and the reason this is critical is is to help us figure out if something going on if something happens if, if we get a sample and it fails and it's 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 alarming. It's a red flag. It's it's failing. You know, it's 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 out of spec on every single test. Uh, we definitely want to know was that material shipped to across multiple projects in the district or even multiple districts. Uh, so with that with with that storage system and with the logging in system, we're able to find all the project samples. 
uh, and we're also able to go look and see, okay, now we have 10 samples stored for that specific project or at other projects that we can bring back if needed to make sure that, uh, that, that whether this was an ongoing issue, that this material uh, is, is, is failing and it's failed in multiple projects and multiple districts, or is it was just one off, there was sampling didn't go very well or was there a contamination? So uh, the, the documentation that goes with all this is very critical uh, because uh, the only way for us to be able to find that sample that's stored is that it needs to be logged in in our system. So, uh, and that's where the, uh, the guidance document that we developed that goes through all the processes of how to, uh, which containers to use and how to log in a sample for testing and how to log in a sample for storage and how to activate a sample that's stored to be tested again. Uh, that's that's very critical part of our program, and uh, we're continuously looking at uh, I would say how 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 much it's utilized, how much samples we have, and we're we're continuously auditing the districts and giving them feedback on where things can be improved um, to to make sure that we're able to utilize the system that we built. So uh, the system we built is is very helpful, and. Uh, We've we've used it. Uh, we've had a couple of projects where a district says, "Hey, what's going on? This one sample, what should we do? It failed." And then we look at what do you have storage samples. They were they, actually that district had it. They sent the other samples. They were able to make a much better informed decision about the material they received uh, by testing three or four samples uh, from different dates or different production, depending depending on the situation, of course. Uh, that's helped them make a very informed engineering decision rather than just hanging their hat on one uh, sample uh, and and it just it just helped everyone it helped it helped mtd get the testing done get all the results compare uh it helped the district and the supplier figure out what's going on as long as the as well as the uh, material producer so it brought everyone at least on the same table we all look at the same results and then the decisions were made were more uh, more meaningful, uh, more uh, more reliable, and uh, more relevant. Hey, Ted, I got a couple of questions that just came in. If you don't mind, I can ask them, and then you can figure yeah. out who's going to who's gonna respond. So the, ahead, the, yeah. the, the first question is, since you receive so many samples each month, how often do you test the samples you receive from the suppliers? I don't know. Maybe that's, do you test all of them that you receive? I think that may be the question. Yes, we test every sample we receive from the supplier. Uh, a supplier, uh, and it's it's a monthly process. So we receive the uh, products uh, at certain times of the month, uh, and if it if they don't pass, if that material is failing, uh, the supplier will not get a QM to sell the material in the following month, and then we do resample again and uh, get it back until. Uh, we figure out what's what's going on with the with the supplier and uh, and get it. So yeah, all all the supplier samples are tested. Okay, so you guys are your lab folks are awfully busy. Uh, here's the second question: Do you use a third party testing party or lab to verify your findings before you address the supplier and contractor? Uh, so the answer to that. For, so for a project samples, no, we do not use third party testing. Uh, all project samples are tested uh, in Cedar Park MTD lab. Uh, we have uh, third party testing helping us with with QM samples. Uh, and uh, the, the reason we're doing that, and I think we're going to get into that maybe a little bit later, Ted, is we're, 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 tr we're trying to, uh, well, one of our goals is to reduce the turnaround time and uh, to make it reasonable such that Project uh, results are out as, as soon as as soon as as soon as possible. Um, however, with like I said, 667 samples or 670 samples in a month, that becomes challenging, uh, given also the fact that uh, we can't hold a QM sample because it will stop a supplier from production the next month, and then will eventually impact the district. That if if the producers are unable to produce and sell the material. Uh, so and we so we we can't really prioritize one over the other. Uh, so uh, 
we're, we're trying to figure ways out to be able to uh, get samples out quicker. Um, and that's where we utilize the third party lab uh, testing uh, to help us with the QM uh, samples. Uh, and this way we will have more resources in the lab here in Cedar Park to get the project samples faster. Okay, thank you. Thanks for those questions, folks. Um, you know, as far as the supplier goes, I can represent uh, us. And uh, one of the things we see extremely valuable with this whole process is the constant feedback. Um, you know, yes, we do get constant uh, notification from TechStot, not only on our QM sampling that we're doing every month to maintain, to maintain our certification, but also we're getting the feedback from TechStot on the uh, field sampling. And it's, it's very important for us to be able to correlate and make sure that our products are remaining consistent uh, from the time it, it gets loaded on that truck to the time it, it gets received and sampled in the field. So chain of custody is very important. And this helps us to try to close the gaps that have been involved or that have been present over the years uh, in understanding you know, really what's going on with our products that are out there. So these are very valuable and we appreciate it. And the communication is ongoing. Um, one of the things that we hope as, as we continue to move was move forward is your database that you're building up, is, is your, your whole logging system to be able to help us respond to issues or questions or one-offs that sometimes happen in the field. Um, and that's very important. And um, it's not just, you know, MTD communicating with the districts, but they're also communicating with us and helping us put a pin to it and, and really understand what's going on with our products out there. So that's been very valuable uh, and we appreciate that. Um, you know, this whole verification process uh, to me is, is where it really took the next step for us, um, you know, in our industry, because the focus has always been on the certification process and that field sampling uh, to me is, is where the value has really stepped it up to where you as the paying customer, TechStot, as well as the paying public, know exactly what they're getting in the field. So, at, you know, it, is there anything that, that we kind of missed or need to touch base on uh, concerning that whole field verification process? Uh, the one thing I would emphasize, as you mentioned, is the chain of custody. Uh, we definitely, uh, the districts uh, are responsible to make sure that the sample that's collected is witnessed uh, by a textile employee uh, and labeled correctly and stored correctly and also shipped in time to MTD so, uh, so we're able to test it. Uh, chain of custody is very critical uh, if, if the district uh, if, if the sample is not tracked from the time it's collected, if it's not labeled correctly, uh, it just, it's just it's not going to go anywhere or it's not going to help anyone. Um, so I'll just emphasize again that chain of custody, uh, we, we we bring that message to the districts every every time we're able to, uh, that these are your samples, make sure labeled correctly. By container, if it's storage, you know what it's stored, uh, so you're able to uh, call it out if needed, and ship it also on time uh, to to us to MTD, so we're able to test it and get the results back. Uh, these are uh, these are some of the challenges that we're uh, we're able, or when you look at it, there, there's the, the things that can shorten the time from sample collected to a report sent out. Uh, one of the two things we can look at is how long did it take to get here and how long did it take to be tested? Um, so uh, if the sample uh, collected today, if, if it's shipped within the next two or three days, we get it in the lab, we test it, that's, that's ideal. Uh, so uh, if it stays longer uh, or kept in a storage for a while before it's sent, it will just, you, you don't wanna get delayed results Supplier doesn't want to get delayed results. Hot mix producer doesn't want to get delayed results. So uh, that's where the chain of custody and timely shipping is, is very critical. Um, and again, uh, we, we do address uh, issues that arise like this. Um, I would say as soon as, as soon as we notice something, we bring it up 
directly with whether it's an area office, whether it's a district. Uh, I would say we've we've had a lot of improvement uh, on the uh, on the time timing for shipping recently. Um, and I, I I would just again uh, go back to say, like you said, we've, this has been for a year already. Uh, but if you think before that, what was the expectation? What was the requirements? And what was implemented or not? Uh, we we throw a lot of the districts all at one time, saying you have to do one all these things, including storage, uh, shipping, and all that. And the, the districts reacted very very well. Uh, and but we, we we still can improve, and we will improve, of, of course. Uh, but I just want to uh, make sure that we look at it from both sides. Uh, yes, we do sometimes uh, get a sample maybe shipped in four days instead of two days, uh, but we get a lot of samples shipped on time. Uh, we're able to get samples out as, as quickly as we can as well here. So uh, I would, uh, again, as I said, I would emphasize the chain of custody and, and shipping the samples quickly. And we, we, all, we always do that. We reach out to the districts and uh, clarify things or issues and, and give them any help they need if, if we're able to help. Good. Hey, just one more yeah. question that came in real quick, if you don't mind. It was stated that TxDOT is following up on project-related binder samples that have failed. Will these findings shape specifications and special provisions for future construction projects? That's the first question. And what changes, if any, are anticipated going forward? Can you repeat the first question, sorry? Okay. Um, it was stated that the TxDOT is following up on project-related binder samples that have failed. Will these findings shape specifications and special provisions for future construction projects? So I, I think the answer to that, and, and Ryan and Miles can jump in here if, if, they, uh, if they'd like to. Uh, I think the first thing is, uh, we're, the one, one of the things we're trying to do is uh, understand uh, testing variability between us and the suppliers. So one of the things we're trying to do is to do a, what we're going to call a Texas round robin uh, for binders. So for all different materials, there is a, a proficiency sampling, uh, whether it's aggregate, whether it's concrete, whether it's asphalt. I'm sorry I said the word concrete. Uh, but we don't, we don't have that for binder. We have a national uh, program uh, for the labs but it's not a, uh, it's not Texas based. It's it includes um, all suppliers and all labs and all DOTs across the nation. So we're working with the suppliers to get these uh, test results, just specifically uh, for suppliers who supply materials for TxDOT, along with our results, and to try to run these analyses to see uh, how we all can uh, be closer to the target. Uh, in terms of the specifications, uh, we, uh, if the samples are failing uh, marginally and uh, and the issues are just for that sample, I don't think that will uh, drive us to change the spec. Uh, and uh, so I, I don't know if Miles and Ryan, you guys have any input on that? Yeah, no, I, I guess, you know, from my standpoint, we'll just, uh, once we get the results from the proficiency program that we're planning on establishing, my thoughts are is that we, we take a look at it in future specifications. But as of right now, I don't think we have any any plans to make any changes up to this point. Thank you, guys. Hey, and just a reminder, we've got about 15 minutes left of the program. So I know it's gone fast, but uh, we got to keep on target here. Thank you. Thank you. And, and Ted, I just wanted to uh, also emphasize the importance of sample labeling. Um, you know, I think what everybody needs to really understand is, is that, you know, the sample is only as good as how well you label it, right? So if you don't put the right information on the can, if you put the wrong information on the can, uh, you know, basically uh, it, it really affects the credibility of the sample. And then of course, the credibility of the test, right? And so when, when we at Materials and Test perform testing on an asphalt binder sample, we need to know the PG grade, for example, to know how to test it, right? And so it's very important that the samples get labeled correctly when they're sampled. 
And then like Nod uh, discussed, you know, the custody part of it, but emphasis on that as well, because the custody portion of that is also extremely important. Then I also wanted to kind of explain to everybody about a little bit more going into detail about the barcode system. So when a sample is collected and it's being shipped to MTD, we are asking districts to put in the FedEx tracking number within Site Manager. So when you start to think about that, what that does is that that lets us know kind of we were able to track the sample from the district location to MTD. As soon as that sample gets to MTD, the reason why we have districts put the barcode on the box is because when it arrives to our shipping dock, our shipping and receiving person scans that barcode that's on the box. Then that box is delivered to our lab. And when it gets to our lab, we scan the sample again, that same barcode, but this time it's on the can. And so what that allows us to do is that allows us to be able to track that sample from the project to the loading, to the shipping receiving area at MTD, from MTD to the shipping receiving area to the actual asphalt labs. We're able to track that sample from project to the asphalt lab. So that's kind of the idea uh, behind the barcode system. In addition, when I'm saying labeling sample, it's also very important to put that information in the site manager. What that barcode is, is basically the site manager ID. So when that sample is scanned here at MTD, we use that, that site manager ID to basically populate the test report. So whatever information is in the site manager at that time is the information that goes on to the test report. So I just wanted to make those two uh, points, if you will. Thank you, Ryan. You know, uh, one of the things that you were talking about um, to get a better feel for how well we all align with each other or correlate with each other, um, you know, we're all in agreement that uh, we need to be a, a part of a Texas specific round robin testing just to make sure that we know as an industry, what is our standard deviation between, you know, labs, between testers, between locations, uh, so that we can best uh, produce the best possible product out there that we know that we're not going to have an issue in borderline or barely in or barely out of spec that, uh, we all have a better, best understanding of what our deviations are between our labs. And it's another way of uh, also self-checking. I know you guys are gonna look for it that way as well, but we do too. Uh, on the national level, we use it as a self-check. We do stay in line, uh, but uh, it's even more important that we have that set up even on this, on a more local level with the state of Texas. So uh, we're looking forward to that process. Um, you know, to me, that's going to help us all uh, best understand how to deal with the issues that we're going to see. I mean, you know, when you're talking about the sheer numbers of samples that are coming in, not just from the certification process, but also from the field, you know, we're going to have one off. So we're going to have issues and best to understand how to address the particular issue. Is it an issue? Is it a one off? Is it something that needs to be you know, more widespread dealt with. And that's that's where the communication comes in. You know, it's something that TechSAPA, as well as the major associates, you know, we're, we're always touting that open communication is the most important thing to do. It's just constantly, you know, keep those line of communications open, don't make any assumptions and continue doing the communication, not only with MTD with folks over there, but also with the district when those test results come out. Um, you know, let's give everybody an opportunity to really properly evaluate you know, what we're seeing in the field, uh, what we're seeing as far as on the quality of our materials. And in turn, that's gonna give us a much more consistent um, product that's gonna be put down. Is there yeah. any other uh, specific changes that you guys are expecting to see coming up uh, when we're talking about this program? about the program in general. Um, the, I think the couple of things we mentioned is uh, starting the Texas specific round robin. Um, that, that, that'll that be one of the uh, main things. Uh, we, we're trying our best to get the turnaround time uh, reduced and uh, we're, we're trying to add more, uh, getting more help 
and third party testing to make sure that we're, we're able to uh, get that going for the QM. So we have the time to get the uh, project samples uh, faster. Uh, we're, uh, we're, we're, uh, we're always working with, with, with the suppliers, trying to see if there's any uh, anything we can, uh, like cleaning up the specification or if there's any issues, that's, that, that's always going to be ongoing process. So uh, we're, uh, that, that's something we're doing. Um, but in terms of changes, uh, we just want to, uh, I think we're getting almost to the time where uh, we have a, a year long of experience that we can look back and see and uh, see where where things were missed, uh, if it's individual things or if it's a certain location or is it a system thing that we can uh, we can fix? As as Miles mentioned, uh, we start calling the districts when we send a failure report. Uh, that we just implemented that recently uh, because we had a couple of issues where we get a call from someone's like we didn't receive this report and then. We did, you know, you go back and look, and it's it's not it's not you know who who did and who didn't do what, but we just try to add another layer of helping the districts, making sure that they know that they got that uh, that that email. Uh, so we reached out to the districts. We came up with their uh, list of contacts, just like we did with the suppliers. Uh, I believe you remember that tip back uh, last year. We we wanted to make sure that also the report is going to the right person uh in the at, at the supplier side uh we, and believe it or not we had some wrong emails that <laughs> uh, someone changed email or something i mean things change all the time so that open communication uh, or keeping updating these lists of, of lists of contacts that that that's very critical uh to get the results out to the district and the supplier and having them also uh you know, get the results eventually the contractor and the uh, and the material producer or a hot mix producer as well. Um, so uh, we're, we're continuing to do that. As uh, Ryan also mentioned, the barcode and uh, we we're, we're practically able to internally know that a sample is coming to the binder lab once it's received at the uh, at the dock. The dock receives. I mean, we talk about 600 samples a month. Generally, them. The docs receiving thousands of samples uh, for the entire building, so uh, and other equipment and so many different things. So uh, it it helped us looking. I can open an Excel sheet, see now. Okay, we have ten samples scanned today. This morning, we're expecting them to be here in the next couple of hours, and we double check that and make sure that they're received. Uh, and if not, we're, we're we're either gonna find it or request another sample or, or work on it immediately rather than wait until. Two months later, we get a call from a district. I sent the sample, we didn't get the results. Well, send us another sample now, right? But it's it's been, it's been sixty days, so uh, we we check that uh, two to three times a week. Uh, that Excel sheet that tell us what's logged in the lab, what's logged in at the docking station, and that that has been honestly uh, very helpful in closing these. Uh, you know, picking up the issue before it becomes an issue, right? You get instead of waiting until the district asks for it or, or a supplier asks for a result, we're able to figure that out quickly. So so these are some of the changes we're implementing as we go. Uh, and as I said before, uh, we're, we're almost there. We're not there yet. Uh, we're, there's always room for improvement for all of us, MTD, suppliers, and districts. And and we're, we'll take any opportunity to or any chance to listen to any ideas to get things better? And we're, we'll definitely, uh, we'll, 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 if, if anything is implementable, we'll implement it as long as it's going to make things better for everyone. We'll definitely do that. Thanks, Anand. I know we don't have very much time left, and I'd like to go ahead and open it up to both you, Ryan and Miles. As if you had anything else you wanted to add to it, um, we'll go right yeah. ahead. So yeah, and. So yeah, we're 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 trying to make we're working with the, the existing program we have to make it as efficient as as it can be, and you know we're we're tweaking things uh, and we're calm, we're looking at that data we're looking at, at the data that we're getting to see how we can use that to benefit everyone to help make that make it better program better, but I, and I do want to bring 
uh, something to uh, out that, that Jim Warren said at the beginning of the meeting is very important, you know, uh, and it, it, that applies to all materials that you, know, you, you take, when you take that sample, you know, you take, you, you take a representative sample. It is very important. It's, it's, it's important for all materials, but for asphalt binder that we're talking about today, that is very important. I want to point out that Texapa, and you talk about YouTube videos, Texapa has YouTube videos out there on, on, on proper uh, methods for sampling uh, that, that binder, that asphalt. And so we want to point that out. And if, and if, if you know, if, if you are not, uh, uh, if you're, you're if you're responsible for sampling liquid asphalt, I encourage you to go out and seek those out. You know, and I, I haven't looked through all of them, but the ones that I have seen look very good. They're, you know, there's they're, it, it, it covers different uh, sampling locations. You know, and so I want to also say that it's important that when you uh, that when you take those samples and you go into a site manager to document that, that you also put in there where you got that sample from. And so uh, you know, in everything you do. You know, it's all about confidence, you know, in, in our program. So in, in the decisions, what you do should be, uh, uh, the actions you do should be to uh, uh, decisions made to, uh, for, in the name of quality. And so, you know, to, to provide confidence to everyone that that sample that we got, those results that we get are, are, are representative, you know, and, but it goes back to what Jim said, getting that right sample doing that right, you know, and then, then everything else has been talked about today is, is very important. Great. How about you, Ryan? You have anything? Yeah, Ted, you know, I think like Miles said earlier, you know, this, this is a team effort. There's a lot of moving pieces and everybody needs to do their, their part, right. To make this entire program work. And, you know, as we said a couple of times on the, on the presentation that you know we're, we're looking into how to make this more efficient make it as efficient as we possibly can but i think also we we need to understand that everybody needs to do their part to make this process work and so excellent and again uh we appreciate it uh we appreciate all your efforts uh and the ongoing process and the openness to uh even the feedback that you're getting um because I know we're good about giving a lot of feedback, so uh, you know we appreciate that on on your part as well, Jim. I think uh, that's going to pretty much wrap it up for us. And uh, unless there's some questions that need to be ad answered, nope. I think uh, that's that's all we had uh, that came in. Hey, I appreciate uh, all the feedback, or the questions. Uh, great, great conversation today. Uh, uh, helping move the whole thing forward. I'm, I'm amazed at the number of samples that go through that building, and and uh, you know we just got to keep it going. And you, it just reinforces we've got to use the labeling, we've got to use the barcodes, we've got to use all that sort of stuff in order just to make sure we're testing the right sample and we're reporting the right thing. And you're right, we got to get good sampling. So hey, just real quick, um, a big thanks again to our sponsors. Uh, for our scholarship program donors this year, benefactors, Angel Brothers and Century Asphalt, uh, Anderson Columbia, AL Hel Hellcamp, uh, Longview Asphalt, HNTV, Jebro, Power Screen Texas, Lavas, and Cutler. Uh, big thanks to that. Check us out on YouTube. Let's all be safe out there um, and keep doing the right thing, laying smooth asphalt and ever forward, everybody. <laughs>